Joining me now is Dr. Tim Mackle, Chief Executive of Dairy NZ. Hello, Tim. Kia ora there, bro. Now, this year there's been a fair bit going on. Uh, Kiwi dairy farmers have risen to a number of challenges, it's fair to say, continuing to prove our long-standing position as one of the world's best milk producers and also one of the world's best uh, innovative farmers, I reckon. Through uh, tough periods of regulatory changes, we've had COVID-19, we've had uh, staffing shortages as yet, but the dairy industry has, real show, has really shown resilience. And I know it's a word we hate, but there really is no other word for it. They have just soldiered on through. Uh, Dairy NZ continues to focus on helping farmers to navigate these challenges, investing in research to better support farming too, which you can be very proud of, I reckon. At the moment, there's a number of key topics that are top of mind for farmers, uh, including emissions pricing, public perception, the new intensive winter grazing rules as well. So I'm really keen to get your thoughts on these, Tim. Uh, first of all, let's talk about emissions pricing. Let's just get this one over and done with. What is Dairy NZ's position and how do you plan to support farmers? Yeah, well, quite simply, we don't support the government's version of uh, emissions pricing and, and um, the, the submissions went in uh, last week and so there's a heck of a lot of work and activity going on there. We've put submissions in, a lot of farmers have, all of our partners have worked closely on that. Look, we're looking for a, a, a system that's fair and workable and practical and we not worked. too much to ask for. No, not really. I think well, the, the key thing is we worked together, 13 partners, for you know two and a half years, kind of thing, to get to a point where everyone could work with what was there. Not perfect, equal unhappiness zone, perhaps, but it but it was going to work and it was going to get better over time. And so we put that in together, and it was a partnership with the government. And so we want to get back to that uh, and, and and move forward from there. And it's really important that we do. Uh, so obviously. You're united with the likes of Beef and Z, uh, Beef and Lamb New Zealand. There's Federated Farmers. There's nine core principles on the emissions pricing, and those were reflected in your individual submissions as well. Yeah, they were, and I think uh, we've had a good look at everyone's submissions. There's quite a lot of consistency there, I think, but particularly uh, for the work we did with Beef and Lamb uh, and and Federated Farmers, as you say. Uh, our boards got together, got in a room for several hours, and there was a lot of alignment on that. So that's been good because it's given farmers more clarity too on what we all feel and think about this, particularly given that we've been quite close to it for quite some time, and farmers are busy as heck, aren't they? So yeah. they don't have that time. So I think it's been really powerful to be able to do that. Yeah, and of course, uh, you're going to be committed to working with your sector partners, I guess, through to these methane targets in 2024. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, for Waka Kanoa and, and, of course, the government's pricing approach, uh, job's not done. The submissions went in. There's going to be a lot of discussions that are going to have to go on in the next few months to get to that point where uh, we've got something that's fair and workable. Um, at the same time, related to that, but a different process is the targets and the process for that. You know, the Climate Commission are going to review that in 2024. So we all need to work together now to, to basically work through the science and uh, the other considerations and come up with something again that's fair. We're playing our part, but, but it supports our sectors as well. It really has been quite damaging for farmer confidence, not feeling listened to in this process. I think so. I mean, I think it's probably the sum total of a whole lot of things. And I, I suppose that's one of the real paradoxes for us all that we've been pondering at the moment is given for dairy farmers and, and others, you know, land prices and so on, um, it's pretty good yeah. over the last several years. And yet, um, you know, the sentiment is, is, is not where it needs to be. Uh, a lot of farmers are feeling pretty down about life. Now, there's a lot of things that contribute to that. But undoubtedly, you know, the, the regulation program has been one of those issues, uh, along with a bunch of other things. Um, you know, for dairy, um, the spring, unless you're in Southland, of course, it's been pretty rough. It's been very tough. And a lot of farmers are behind right now on making silage in particular. Uh, way behind, really. So yeah. uh, that's something to think about, too. But um, yeah. At least we've had uh, good rain going into summer, possibly too much. Yeah, so. although, you know, <laughs> uh, scientists to me, but you get evapotranspiration. At, if you get four mils a day, then it can run out pretty quickly, Rowena. Yeah. So, yeah, we always need rain. Uh, we're always complaining. <laughs> yeah, we are indeed. Hey, I've got my jandals on at field days. It is still field days with jandals. Look, you mentioned that farmers are really conscious about public perception, uh, more so, I reckon, in the last couple of years. Can you tell me about why this is important and what Dairy NZ is doing to support farmers on this? When we survey farmers every quarter, and we do almost 500 farmers every quarter to understand how they're feeling, how, the, how we're doing for them, and also what their needs are, 
this whole issue of, of, of connecting farmers with the public uh, comes up consistently, probably in the top three priorities. So it's always been, as far as I can remember, a big issue for them. And I think it's probably grounded in, in that feeling that fundamentally farmers want to be connected with their communities and they, they, they feel like they're doing great work, yeah. they're contributing, they're producing an amazing, nutritious, wholesome food. Um, but at the same time, you know, they often feel like people are having a go at them, you know, and, and they're not doing great work. But we know they are, and they're making big improvements. So I think they just want to connect and share their stories, and so um, that's something we're investing in. Yeah, uh, as part of Dairy NZ's response, you've launched the latest phase of the Here for the Long Game campaign this month. Yeah, I mean, and Here for the Long Game, you know, for us it signals that exactly what it says, we are here for the long game. We have been here a long time. And, uh, and we've always got better and we plan to keep getting better. So the latest theme is all around better and it builds on the work we did earlier in the year with Shannon Munro, the, the dairy farmer. She's Bay wonderful. She, oh, she's amazing. She's uh, charisma uh, personified. Plus, yeah. She's just absolutely amazing. So, so this is about you know, that theme and sharing the stories of the good work farmers are doing and, and, and what we were heading as well. And I think connecting with the public because... You know, our research shows, Ro, that the vast majority, probably 50% of the New Zealand public, are pretty jolly busy with their daily life. They're just, for a range of reasons, you know, just struggling to, to cope with things. And so how do you connect with them, you know? And that's our challenge right now. And, and even though I'm a scientist, as you know, and I love facts and figures, you've got to start with the heart. And I think yeah. that resonates with farmers too. Yeah, beautiful. Hey, look, the new intensive winter grazing rules may be challenging for some farmers. How does Dairy NZ plan to support farmers around these new rules? Yeah, well, two things really. Firstly, um, because different councils are now needing to do things individually, you know, we were hoping for more of a national approach, then it's really important farmers connect with their regional council rules and how they're going to cope with winter grazing for next year. Uh, and the second thing is we are going to be running, you know, campaigns again to help farmers and those who support them just know where to get the resources and how they can deal with those issues as well. But, yeah, look, it's, a, it's very disappointing. We, we feel like we didn't have the options that we wanted uh, for wintering, particularly with that, um, you know, uh, I guess alternative to getting a consent uh, through, that, through that freshwater planning module. Um, for wintering, but but you know that's something that we, we asked for a delay to make sure that could come through, and we didn't get that. First of November clicks over, and we're into the new rules, uh, but it comes down to how regional councils are now going to to manage that. So again, comes back to uh, we'll keep working with the government and with all of our partners together, like Fed Farmers and Beef and Lamb in particular, to to make sure those options are available for farmers in the future. But in the meantime, they need to connect uh, with the councils. And you've got a heap of resources available on your website, yep. dairynz.co.nz, to help farmers with this. We do, we do. And there'll be some more workshops and so on coming up as well. Yeah, fantastic. Look, it's been uh, an eventful year for dairy farmers. Can you tell me a bit about the other work that Dairy nz has been up to? Yeah, well, this, I mean, probably, un well, not probably, absolutely our number one priority right now, particularly coming out of COVID and all those challenges and not being connected, is to connect with farmers. Yeah. So, you know, the year that we've had this year in 2022, you know, we've had about 800 um, different what we call learning events with farmers, whether mm -hmm. they be seasonal groups or discussion groups and different field days, about 13,500 uh, dairy farmers were connected during that time. And we need to keep doing more of that and, and increase those numbers over time. But it's not just about activity and numbers, it's about quality and, and helping farmers with things that they they need and work for them in their situation. So we've had a real focus on more of a farmer-centred design approach to everything we do, getting them involved at the front end of, of things when we're developing something to make sure that it actually works for them and in a way it, that suits them. So that's been our big focus there too. You've also got um, 16 critical levy-funded research projects that are underway. How do you keep track of all of them? Oh, look, there's, a, there's a, an amazing science program going on at DRNZ. I'm really proud of it, and I think we've got some talented uh, people who have come put that together, again, taking great feedback from farmers and from partners. Uh, and, you know, it is all about, uh, I think Bruce has talked a lot about the, that global competitiveness, yeah. being responsible locally um, and resilient as well and, and those things. So there's some great projects. I think one of the big standout things at the moment, which is quite topical, is the work we're doing around greenhouse gas mitigation. Our, our facilities here in the Waikato at uh, Lye Farm, where we have 
indoor metabolism stores, we've got uh, you know systems that can measure methane and that kind of thing, they're going flat out. So yeah. we're pretty much going to try and run them for the whole year, testing different compounds and different approaches to, to give farmers solutions as quick as we can. There's also been work done around the uh, code of welfare that's been updated. Yeah, that was another thing this year. It came through pretty quickly uh, in the middle of the year and... Um, uh, thankfully, uh, I actually talked to MPI and um, they managed to give us a little bit more time on the consultation, so we managed to get around the country a bit, talk to farmers and get a really strong, robust submission. And, but, you know, the work's not done there. We're still waiting for that response back to now say, how do we improve what was proposed and, uh, and get something, again, that's fair and workable, given that, you know, look, you've always got to get better, we're saying that, but let's not forget that we've got world-class animal welfare standards as well. Another push this year has been Go Dairy. It has, yeah, and that was a great campaign. You've got a bit of that here today at the field days, a taste for that, Ro. Um, look, I think, uh, you know, the, 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 the new approach to that and the website that we set up to try and attract farm assistance, and, of course, that's the, the group of, of farmers that we need the biggest numbers for is people that are coming into the system. Uh, we had about 6,000 uh, people that, that came in, in in our country through the website to look for jobs, so that was encouraging. And uh, we know a good chunk of those have ended up in farms, but we're still short, you know, we still need more people, so that's why Go Dairy is such a critical uh, catchphrase for us right now. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. And look, as someone who didn't come from a dairy farming background, when I went dairy farming, I loved it, and I wish there had been a program like that around at the time. Hey, look, the other challenge that you've really faced this year, speaking of, of labour and trying to get people into the industry, has been trying to get people into the country. Yeah, immigration, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to... I don't want to moan about it because in the day it's farmers, it's it's a whole lot of other sectors, you know, who have been short-staffed and mm. struggling to get people, which people have been separated. But you put that aside, it has been a big effort too, and our team have worked very hard um, on behalf of farmers during the year, uh, during the last few years, basically, to try and get those settings right, to bring more people in. And again, you know, shout out to our partners, Fed Farmers, in this. They've also worked uh, with us really closely too. But, you know, the... Um, I guess that, that, that the system has been changed at the start of July and um, dairy is a, a arguably in a, in a strong position now to bring people in. We do have to pay them at the median wage. It has just gone up to pretty much $30 an hour. Uh, Amazing. Which, which I'm is, in the wrong industry. Uh, Why I went from dairy to radio, <laughs> I have no yep. idea. And I just want to clarify, well, that's the government rules. That's not our <laughs> rules. Um, but by the same token, you know, you can now get a three-year visa instead of a one. So some of the settings have really improved. Uh, and I think, you know, we, market workers will always play a very, very important part of our sector. It has for decades. Yeah. If we look back well over 100 years, and, and it will continue to, to, particularly the way, you know, that demographics are happening in, in develop, developed countries. I think we've got about 10,000 less uh, 20 to 30-year-olds than we do 30 to 40-year-olds in this country. Now, it may wow. not sound a lot. But if you keep doing that sort of thing every year, yeah, then eventually maybe the triangle gets inverted and, yeah. and we've got an issue. So the ability, I think, globally for people to flow and move around to actually uh, be where the need is to produce food, to do all sorts of important stuff is going to be key forever, I think. So we've got to get it sorted. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're well placed to capture anyone who has got a slight uh, interest. In well, we've got some, some gumboots and gloves and an apron for you, right, on the weekend. <laughs> if you, you can stay up on the weekend if you want. My goodness, yeah, milk before I head up to Billy Joel. <laughs> hey, look, how fantastic looking out, seeing people wandering around field days, seeing people stopping and yarning. You can basically, you can't even go more than five metres at the moment without bumping into you someone else, yeah. you know. How good is it to be back here at it's, field days connecting? Fantastic to be back, yeah. yep. Uh, apart from seeing you, which is always a highlight, right? Yeah. I think the thing is, um, you know, the good thing about having a bit of rain out there is people come inside to this place, don't yes, they? Yes, exactly. So exactly. We're, we've got to make hay while that's happening. No, brilliant. Uh, finally, Tim, your annual report for Dairy NZ is up on the website. Yep, it is. Um, like uh, so many other organisations, we're going digital now. And so it's, it's all there on the website. And look, uh, if, if, you, if farmers do have a chance to look at it or anyone who's interested, there's, there's a lot of content in the back of it in terms of the projects that we have been doing and the ones we are going to do. And it does give you a fair idea of where the levy's been invested, but more importantly, where the value's been created. Yeah, fantastic. Dr Tim Mackel, Chief Executive of Dairy NZ, wonderful to see you in person you too. at Field Days. Thanks, Thanks for your time. And I love the jandals, by the way. <laughs> Field Days and jandals, how good. <laughs>